This episode of Getting Table is brought to you by Valhalla Hobby. Use code TABLE to get 5% off your first order over $100. Please consider becoming a Patreon for $2 a month. Brought to you by some guys on the internet. This is Getting Table. With your hosts, Jason the Bruce. You guy! George the Yang. I hope you're all entertained by my inaptitude. Jason, a.k.a. Major Socks. We've been doing this and talking about various stuff. One of the stuff. Now sit back, relax, and get tabled. Hello, future people, and welcome to episode 143 of Getting Tabled with your host. He's not the Bruce, he's better. It's Major Socks. That's right, folks. I am better than uh, Bruce, who decided to leave us because he's off having fun in Pax Australia. So, for his whatever. birthday, it's like that special yeah, to For him his birthday. Something. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, Anyways, Bruce, I, I, I hope things start to sag more um, and, and things uh, droop and touch, touch the water where you sit <laughs> on the toilet. Uh, uh, if you need more info than that, then... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have George, but George isn't as important because we have one of our patrons, JP, listening in with us. And if you are a patron, you can do that. So that's welcome, right. JP. Hi, JP. And we've got George. I guess we'll acknowledge George is here since he's technically running everything here. Dang, Skippy. Yeah, no, part of uh, the Patreon bonus is if you uh, do support us, you can listen to us do this live. Um, usually most of the stuff we say does make it into the podcast and the recording, but sometimes you get to hear um, us be, uh, I guess, less smart than normal. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, so, yeah, uh, so let's do some some stuff. Newly received or noteworthy information especially about recent or important events. Alrighty, first up on the docket, I stumbled upon this by pure accident. Uh, this was in my Sylvaneth group uh, on Facebook, and someone had posted this bonsai tree kit. Yeah, this is kind of cool. So it's a one-to-one -one scale bonsai plastic kit. So if and you I don't want to have to grow it, you can make one. Well, and, and just aesthetic and appearance-wise, it is a great-looking tree. Um, I'm, yes. I'm scrolling through the sprues right now, um, and, you know, you could, you could you know, spray paint it, you know, throw some wash on, give it more texture and depth for sure, do some flocking, um, then put it together, but it looks absolutely stunning. Um, the one thing I've got up on the screen right now, Socks, if you want to scroll through the photos, is I have the plastic, you know, pot, so to speak, and then the base it sits on. The base is yep. sitting flat, which means you have to do zero work to get it ready for yeah. the tabletop. Yeah, it, which it's absolutely incredible what they've done here. Yeah, and it, it looks super good. Uh, I've got a close up of the the leaves, uh, the tree trunk. You know, you throw some paint on this, and it would look so good. Um, now we're going to compare this to the Awakened Woods, right? Which that's what the Sylvanith uses, the Awakened Woods. And, yeah, these are good generic trees. They've got some rock stuff. You can put it to, to make a circle. But if I have Sylvanath Army and I'm bringing my trees for my army's advantage, I want to bring these. These look... Yeah. It's, it's such a different look, and it looks so much better, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Uh, looks really, really good. Uh, how many sprues is there, roughly? Uh, about six or five or six? I would say about six sprues. Uh, yeah. I'm wondering if I can copy this and put it in the chat for JP to see, because that is one thing we still have not done yet is as a uh, screen sharing mm -hmm. while live uh, broadcasting. If you want to check that out, JP, so you can see the tree we're talking about. Because actually, it, my guess is I'm going to have uh, for the leaves itself. You're probably going to have close to five or six sprues of just the leaves. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, but just based off. Go ahead. But leaves are just based off the the sprue, the the model of the sprue itself for the leaves. Yeah, well, and the amount of leaves that's on the tree itself. Yeah, but that'll give you the choice of you know, you know, do you want it dense? Do you want it as like foliage as possible? Like you know, it's got lots of yeah. versatility. 
Um, and the fact that it's, everything is off on a sprue, like you could do a lot of painting before you assemble it. And I mean, it would just be really good looking terrain. Yeah. Um, JP does uh, give us a good point. It could either be really well priced or stupid expensive. Um, my hopes is that it, since it's a bonsai tree and not a Gundam, uh, I believe that's uh, who makes the as Bandai, right? Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing it might be reasonably priced because it's not a Gundam. Now, if it was a Gundam bonsai tree, uh, that would be epic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Next on the list is a Kickstarter I found, um, and this is my childhood. And I was going to say it's it's the '80s classic childhood dream oh god yes it is a teenage mutant ninja turtles board game um i do have five bucks on it to get the pledge manager i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get it or not um uh do you know where sunrise do you know where sunrise florida is socks you're the most recently one there yeah yes i do know where it is and is it underwater it may be underwater oh okay partially so um, but scrolling through here, uh, we've got some minis, and just this picture, like, these minis look great. Yeah, absolutely great. Uh, JP just put in our text, uh, $298. For one? So, Gundam uh, pricing. Yeah, so, jeez. Uh, uh, um, that's, that's sad and disappointing. Um... I don't recommend uh, third-party uh, sculpts, but I might in that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, go back to the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Um, here's a here's a close-up of the uh, uh, the turtle minis, and they look so good. Yes, they do look really, really good. Um, I just. We got Shredder and Krang. I don't know if it's going to be two part plastic to get the purple cloak and the the pink brain, but yeah, again, that looks so good. And and the thing is, with it being like you know nineteen eighties cartoon, like it would be so easy to just do like a nineteen eighties you know cartoon comic book paint job with you know Thanks, zero yeah. shading, and it's still going to be awesome because it's it, it's just what it is. Yeah. Um, there is nine days to go, as you mentioned. Uh, they're well past their funding with a million dollars. So, uh, what do we got left here? Let's see. Yeah. So, components: the four turtles, eight health dials, sidekick tokens, action cards, villain miniatures, uh, foot soldier tokens. I'm guessing a lot of the unlocks will probably be additional miniatures. Like, uh, hopefully. Oh yeah, here's the Krang Bubble Walker. Uh, there's an April O'Neil. Ooh, different poses for the turtles too. Nice. Of course, got to get Bebop and Rocksteady. Oh yeah. Yeah, I I, I could feel my my twelve year old self getting so happy. Um, the uh, the core pledge is eighty dollars, uh, and that's the basic. The ultimate is two twenty five and. That comes with all the extras, so it looks like there are actual Foot Ninja minis. Um, that's going to be a pain to paint all that. Yeah. Um, so oh. Sunrise, going back to your comment about where Sunrise is, Sunrise is down by Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. So okay. it, it was on the eastern side of the state Okay. and further south of where Milton hit. So they may get, have some wind damage and stuff like that, but uh, not to the extent that... Nothing too this, crazy. Yeah, so this, this pledge should still... Pretty well, pretty okay. well. Um, yeah, so here it is. Uh, add ons uh, for seventy dollars extra toppings. Uh, it's a pizza box. Um, I love of it. Course. I love it. Uh, that gives you actual minis for Bebop, Rocksteady, the alternate poses for the turtles, um, Casey Jones, April, Master Splinter, uh, and then there's another add on pack where you get deluxe tokens, and of course a neoprene battle mat. Now let's see here. Yeah, the 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 XL Ultimate Supreme for two twenty five includes the extra toppings and the battle mat. So, um, that's not the most expensive Kickstarter I've seen, considering how much I've seen like Simon stuff go for, and uh, yep. I saw how much uh, 
people have lost on Darkest Dungeon. So it's not too terribly bad. Uh, yeah, they're saying Continental US shipping price is gonna be about ten bucks. Uh Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico is twenty. And then the rest of the world is in, anywhere between fifteen and twenty for most of the world, and then there will be some countries that'll have a hundred dollars. So not bad shipping costs either for and Australia is fifteen bucks for shipping. So Yeah, I don't think that's gonna stay. I think that's gotta change. That, that yeah. That and or that's just gotta be for like the core, not the uh XL Supreme. The extras. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I'm really... Oh, one of their international partners for the Southeast Asia for distribution is Simon. So um, that gives me a lot of confidence in this Kickstarter with a, a company like that involved for their uh, mm-hmm. distribution. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm super excited for this. Uh, uh, all I have to say is uh, you, you have to get a posting at F.E. Warren so we can play this, Sox. That would be awesome. I will do what I can. Can't guarantee it. Good good job. Uh, next on the list, we got some uh, new releases from Parabellum. Uh, some and, new Conquest stuff. Yeah, some new Conquest stuff. And uh, I didn't read who this is. This is the Mounted Predator. And this mini... For looks, the war run. Yeah, looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, so you got a... Rider on top of what looks like an Allosaurus or some kind of a yeah, like a small um, Allosaurus or or maybe the yeah. rider's just huge, you know. <laughs> that could be the case too. Uh, but yes, it looks amazing. Yeah, th- this has a, a feel of what some of the uh, lizard men should be for a uh, uh, Sigmar fantasy. Yeah, and the paint job is is done really well too, with the, the feathers and on the tail and back of the legs and yeah, uh, ju- yeah. The, adding that to the sculpt now that we're knowing that you know dinosaurs you know did have feathers you know more likely than not, uh, adding that into a sculpt concept like this is is a great artistic choice. Um, it's on pre order for the low low price of ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, it is thirty eight mil. The box size is. 30 by 30 by 6 centimeters. So, uh, it's a big one. Um, where's the yeah. height? Do we have a height for it? Uh, uh, I'm not seeing... Uh, nope, I'm not seeing one. I don't see one. Um, it is on pre-orders. Unless, unless the scale is 38 mil. And that's their, their height that they're talking about. Uh, not for 100 bucks. That's... Oh, you're right, you're right. So, uh, it, it is a 38 uh, mil scale game. Uh, next That's on the right. list, uh, we uh, this one's 129. Um, oh, here we go. This one actually has the height of 19 centimeters. Uh, and this looks very uh, blue people avatar. Yeah, so we got like a pterodactyl type flying creature with another rider, and the rider is throwing a spear that he has a rope attached to it that he can... Based off of the, the concept of, of his attack is he spears you and then he just drags you along the ground as he's flying away. And you know what the best part is, Socks? He could sneak up on you while going to the bathroom because the pee is silent. There you go. Um, again, great paint job. The, the wings look absolutely stunning. Um, yes. That's what, that, and it looks like... Looks like there are maybe two different types of heads that you can use. Possibly, yeah. One's like a skull. The other one is like a... Almost like a face mask type of thing. You can see it here in this... Yeah. Kind of little thumbnail in the top left of the the photo that I'm on. Um, $130. This one, again, is also for pre-order. So they do give us a size 19 centimeters, so... That's a good eight inches tall. Yeah. But that's probably also on the, the flying base that it'll be part of because that's this being a flying creature. That's fair. Um, then we have some uh, troops uh, chosen of death for the wardrobe. Uh, again, these look great. I love how they actually show close ups of the paint job. So that you can, like, see how they get that depth of look, you know? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Um, so yeah, you got a set of 12 miniatures, uh, three plastic infantry stands. So this is some infantry for 44 99, uh, 12 bases, which is about so, on par uh, for what their stuff runs. So yeah, all the different poses with, uh, clubs and daggers and swords, scimitars, uh, some really, really cool scopes, jagged, scopes. jagged tooth like design, even very, yeah. very nasty looking. And then, ooh, here's a big one. Uh, Promethean Oracle. Uh, this is part of the Art Artisan series for the City States. Uh, he is also on pre order for $139.99. And this is stunning. Like, uh, it's just amazing. I would not want to get stabbed by his uh, spear there. I'm on the uh, the close up that's got the uh, the six, the seven images of it. Yeah. And just the detail on this is. Like yeah, that some of the, the lines, tattoo like describing. That, yeah, that the, like the lines for the veins or whatever the, the muscle, like scarring, whatever it is, it's part of it. the The tattoo is part of it. Like that's just really cool. This is also twenty centimeters, so good tall giant. Yes. I'm just I'm sitting here looking at this in awe with you know the paint job on it. It's just it, the paint job does so much for this mini. Yeah, especially with the crystals coming out of his skin on that right arm, right forearm area with all the scarring. Yeah, just looks amazing. It's almost uh, volcanic, actually. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, again, tw twenty centimeters tall, so you know. D definitely a bigger, bigger mini for the, uh, the for the board. Uh, next on the list we have uh, Weird Gaming. Uh, let's see, it's August. Mark Malifo. Yes, more Malifo. Uh, we're scrolling down to the October releases, and we've got Bad Omen. Uh, he looks like a good boy. Uh, <laughs> yes. Again, I I don't have much input on this. This is a very Bruce game. Uh, he he would know everything about this. Uh, Thirty dollars for the uh, the bad omen. Then we have Z Zhang Zhang. Ten thunders versal. This looks really cool. This looks like yeah. it came out of uh, Bushido almost. Mm hmm. Yeah, that get that Asian Asian like oni look vibe of the. Yep. Um, both of those are thirty dollars each, and then Last Dance Iconic. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. That would be a great mini for a uh, um, uh, diorama piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get a smaller scale, a forty-four millimeter uh, version of the model, and then you get a one hundred nineteen, one hundred eighteen and a half version. So that really cool diorama set that you could do with and it's a couple dancing with the, in a sense uh guy in a top hat we're gonna move on to november releases and it looks like their uh vagrant song uh it's getting reprinted uh with uh, an expansions and probably the cutest thing uh bridge of leaves ghost plushie He's so cute. He's six inches tall. He could live on your desk. And whenever you're sad, yes. you could just hug him. And then we got the propagandist. That is, that is that is really cool. Uh little little walking machine with speakers while yeah, he's on uh, trip. spewing his uh propaganda. Yeah. And then finally, uh, the Resurrection Resurrectionist Starter Box uh, for forty five contains a handful of minis. It looks like measuring device, the deck, some scheme markers. Um, I I know absolutely nothing about the game, but the pricing on it is just so reasonable and um, accessible. I mean, yeah, forty five bucks for the starter set. Yeah, and, and then, get 
and the individual minis are 30 bucks. Like that's that's not terrible at all. Yeah. And then last but not least, uh the boiler maker. Uh, I love the look of this. This is very Victorian steampunk meets yep. um mech Iron movie, Giant or Iron Giant or yeah, it just it looks so good. And a uh, wild, a competitive uh, card game for two to five players. So uh, lots coming this way from uh, Weird. Uh, we'll leave um, the uh, December releases for when Bruce is here so we don't take everything from him. You're welcome, Bruce. Uh, finally, um, some more information on uh, a little... Wait, no. No, that's just no, an advertisement. That's just, uh, that's just an advertisement. No, uh, more Burrows and Badgers. Uh, Warband Miniatures revealed. The Rogue Fox. So got... Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we got a little fox that's uh, got a little rifle and kind of cloaked up like you would see in, as a rogue character in D&D &D or something like that. Very nice looking sculpt. Yeah, and that is the the original sculpt. The so obviously, if you're looking at that, it looks like they're actually using uh, chunks of brass for the barrel shape and everything. Yeah, and sculpting right. People that can do this, like sculpting like this, just absolutely amazing. Amaze me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the because head... the detail on that tail is pretty, pretty. Well, it's deep. And just to take a lump of nothing and, and manipulate it into, you know, a, a, something that looks like that. Like, yeah, like I can take that and I can paint it and it look really good. But if you were to hand me those materials and say, make this, I'd just look at you and be like, it's going to look like crap, but OK. Yeah. Next, we got the hedgehog magic user. Yes. We got the small, small little hedgehog. I would argue Not, he he looks like a Skaven character. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. He's holding up some kind of a charm of some sort with his walking stick behind him. Next up, so. we've got a, a Hound Sergeant. Looks like he might be some sort of a setter hound. Yep. The shield and the mace. Another good boy. Yes, he's probably the best boy. Um, next up on Game Found, Zombie Road TTRPG from Dragon Mount Press. Three to six players, four hour play time. So, um, definitely a sit down and slog it out game. Uh, ages sixteen and up. Pretty much your zombie apocalypse RPG. Yes, but I th it's probably got a little more. Um, uh, I don't know what what is TT tabletop. Oh yeah, tabletop <laughs> tabletop role playing game, right? Yeah. So, um, let's see. Oh, so here here's a little something. So it's a. I don't know how I feel about games like this, but uh, where I scroll down to, it says utilize tools like Google Maps or traditional paper, which I do like, or traditional paper maps to add an extra layer of authenticity. Um, I, I get the idea of that. I don't know if I like that just because it's something that you have to pull in. It does save the game and game developer money because you can go out and get outside resources. Get maps of your own. But yeah. yeah. Um, oh, hey, uh, this is a great dice system for Bruce. Uh, one to four is a failure. Five is a failure, but if you are ready to take a calculated risk, you can sacrifice endurance points to boost your roll or suffer voluntary disadvantages. Six and up is a success. Um, you're rolling D6s, so. <laughs> I'm sure there's got to be some sort of a modifier system because that's brutally hard if you don't. Know, when to four is a failure all the time. Yeah. Like I said, that's, you know, it's like Bruce playing the scourge. Yes. Um, 
Let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, so the rule book and a PDF is fifty five euro. Uh, just the PDF uh, rule book is. Oh wait, no. Oh yeah, yeah. So just the PDF is fifteen euro. Oh, so a lot of these are just okay. So the actual uh, wait, no. There's so much on this. I should have looked at this a little more. Um, trying to make sense of this here. It looks like most of these are PDFs and they're expansions for uh, 15 to 17 euro for expansion books that are PDF. Um, I'm wondering. So it looks like they might only be printing one or two physical books and everything else will be PDF. Yeah, um, which again, if I'm going to be dropping money on stuff, I want I want physical stuff. I I hate doing role playing games and stuff with a PDF. I want the physical copy so I can flip through it faster than you know swiping through twenty thirty pages. So uh, that'll be uh, not not really my thing. Like. Role playing games like they they have to be really unique or, or specific to catch my attention. Um, I don't know if, if Bruce saw this and is super excited. I wish he was here to give his input on it. Um, yeah. Let's see what we got. Uh, oh, uh, here's a couple. You, you might have heard of them, Games Workshop. We actually haven't talked about them for a couple weeks. It's been a while. It's yeah, been a few weeks. Or not a couple. Yeah, a couple uh, podcasts. Few, so. few recording games. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Heresy Thursday, hack and maim with new Legionist Astartes melee weapons. Um, so, let's see. Getting a pack of chain swords, chain swords and sheaths, heavy chain swords, uh, just a whole bunch of weapons. Some heads, some arms. So, this is. This is uh, for uh, Horse Heresy, so so 30k. Uh, some of these will transfer over to 40k, but majorities are are some of these will be uh, only for uh, 30k use if they don't have 40k rules. So just a, a heads up with that. Um, I like this just because uh, sometimes you don't have enough of what you want on the sprue that you know you buy like let's say you want to outfit everyone with this and you have to go like bit shopping because it only comes with two and you want all five squad members to have it so yeah I, i'm all about this um because yeah when i did my thunder wolf calvary i had to buy uh 3d print stuff because i it, the kits did not come in, with enough um weapons for what i wanted uh, next, uh, we have squats for Necromunda or, uh, Votan. And I kind of like these because they're very, they look very low tech, very like just simple and basic. There's nothing fancy about them. Yeah. They, they give me a very, um, like, Cuba Gooding Jr. from uh, Men of Honor, I think was the name of the movie, like Dive Suit, just very simple. Um, yeah. Or um, uh, what are they, uh, the Leviathan Dreadnoughts, even? Just a very simple, plain look. Yeah, here's one with a, uh, a helmet on it. It's a very simple helmet. It's literally, it looks like a white a white plate with a slot in it. Like it's mm -hmm. very, very simple. Um, I kind of want to see a little more of this kind of aesthetic on the, uh, the 40 K army. Cause eventually I will have to buy some of them. And then finally, a new edition of Warhammer underworlds is coming. Uh, and it has the biggest uh, set of rule changes. So, uh, cue the angry fans probably most likely. Yeah. Uh, usually, uh, big rule changes means lots of unhappy players. Uh, yeah. Just ask people who played fantasy. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. 
I, I will say I do kind of like the the way these card layouts are, are looking. Like it's giving you, you know, a description of the fighters and then what all the abilities are uh, on mm-hmm. on a card. Um, I do like that. It's all very simple and contained. Um, yeah. Excuse me. Jeez. I am sleepy. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how the, the fans like this. Um, but yeah, moving on. I'm going to mute this and I'm going to let it play. But uh, Infinity presents uh, some stuff. The Operation Sandtrap Battle Track trailer reveal. Um, so... There's a new army, as as the video said, uh, and they look good. Like Infinity, just yeah, yes. Um, I love I love the look of Infinity on our army. Like it just, they look so good. Uh, I don't like the game, but the minis are just stunning. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, see Griffin troops. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not catching the names of these because I'm like, I'm being like drawn in by the minis, which that's the whole point, right? <laughs> but it looks like also there is a, uh, um, uh, a, a battle kit for it, so it's like the map, map and terrain. No, no, I guess not. That looks like, um, oh, whose is that terrain? Um, uh, war, war arsenal, warsenal. That looks like his terrain, actually. That's back there. Yeah. So, um, again, this looks really good. Uh, if I were to actually play Infinity, I would probably like just look at this, pick this army, just because to me it's so aesthetically pleasing. It's a very, you know, it has that very modern uh, Bushido look feel to it. So, mm-hmm. again, that's pretty cool. Uh, moving on to a Kickstarter project. Uh, Deck of Dice. Dice. Oh. Twenty more days to go. I know why Bruce likes this. Yeah, he's using the deck of cards for rolling dice instead <laughs> of actually rolling dice now. It's okay. You could be a fanboy of something, JP. It's fine. Just like Sox is a fanboy of Warhammer. We just know he is. He just won't admit it. Um, yeah, so deck of dice. Um, it's a deck of cards that you draw for your dice rolls. Um, Bruce is probably a huge fan of this because it'll allow him to at least get a 20 or, or a 6 or whatever at least some of the time. Yes. Um, for, for a tabletop game where sometimes you might... Uh, have to roll five or six dice and you know you have the chance of like you know two twos and four fives kind of thing like definitely not that's gonna be hard to do yeah but um for like an rpg like a pen and paper pen and paper game like this is absolutely a stunning idea because you know if you need to draw like you know a d20 roll like you just flip the next card like i could see where this would be a great idea um and it looks like fourteen dollars, sixteen dollars to back it. Forty five dollars gets you three decks. Uh, Seventy dollars gets you five decks, and ten for one hundred and twenty. Twenty for two hundred. So, um, it, it's a neat idea. I'm surprised no one has actually uh, hasn't done this sooner. Um, but yeah, I think that's a, especially for people like Bruce who whose dice rolls hate them and. They can yeah. never get any satisfaction from dice rolls. Um, finally on the list, uh, I found this, and I thought this was a really great idea given how many I have now and and the varying sizes. Um, Epic Playmat Tubes. So these are 3D printable interlocking uh, parts um, to make neoprene mat dice tubes. So they have a picture of bad ways to store your mats don't look over to my right because i'm not going to say mine are stored like that but it's not far off they're stored like that 
<laughs> not not exactly, but close. Close enough. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. So what this will do is allows you to print off the parts, um, and I've got a little uh, kind of a, a GIF up here um, where it interlocks threads together so you can increase the length if it's a it's a, a longer um, play mat and it's just a 3d printed tube to carry your mat in which yeah. you can have varying lengths as this uh, uh, animation is showing here which I think is great because not all play mats are created equally uh, and there's multiple um, uh, what's the word uh, design themes. yeah themes there we go themes so you can mix and, mix and match themes to create a very unique uh, tube and yeah. uh, there's some options to store some dice with it which for my masters of the universe game i do have extra dice and i have a neoprene mat so something like that would be fantastic um yeah so you got a chinese theme you've got a catacomb so egyptian you got a viking theme dragons futuristic egypt pirates and they all look great i mean yeah. the, the, de the amount of detail on this is one of the amazing. The things I'm on right now is it looks like you have an option to 3D print a tube uh, holder rack, which is very reminiscent of a uh, sword display for Japan, Japanese swords. Yeah. Um, shoulder strap rings. Um, and then on Bamboo Studio, that's what they're uh, um, using as the, the printer. They're giving you estimates of time and filament used to print the parts. So... Again, that's really cool. So, and here's the themes that Sox was talking about. Um, and as cool as these are, I would also like to just see a plain one. Just nothing about it, just a plain one. They kind of do. There is a leather one, if you scroll down a little bit. Where, uh, oh, yeah, right there. Right right above it, right above the uh, the holder. The, yeah, you no, kind of have see. that leather one. Yeah, I see it. Yep. So I that would say that'd be your most generic, plain looking one. But I mean, it still looks great with Ooh, the. Ooh, there is a Cthulhu one. Yeah, for twenty uh, k, which it's an unlock, which they have unlocked. Ooh, the steampunk actually, Aztec. Uh, with it being thirty eight thousand uh, dollars, that should be unlocked. Maybe they've, uh, they've earned. They probably haven't updated the uh, the yeah. website. Pledge. So now here's they, the yeah. here's what uh oh I guess that's not too terribly bad. Uh so nine euro or ten dollars for one tube. I, I suppose that's okay. Uh all in is about fifty four dollars, forty nine euro, and that gets you all the uh tube designs. Um and then two twenty nine euro or two hundred fifty one for a uh commercial license. License, yep. So um, ooh, ooh, that early bird all in was really good. Thirty nine euro or forty three bucks. So, um, I don't, I don't know if I'll back this. Um, I might reach out to them afterwards and see if I can buy the plans later. Um, I do have a few um mats that I do need to store, but I, I don't know if I can justify buying the the plans to STLs. To, to to do this, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, cool what, concept, though. Yeah, very other cool concept. Other than just the little plastic tubes that you can get the clear plastic tubes. Well, you know, in the case of, like, I've got Ankh, right? You know, it's an Egyptian-based yeah. game. There's an Egyptian-based, you know, tube here. I have a neoprene play, net, play mat for the game. So that's definitely something there. Uh, Masters of the Universe really doesn't have an equivalent here. Maybe the Dragon. Um I don't know. Uh, catacombs, possibly, but, you know, I have a Game of Thrones playmat. Um, what else do I have? I have, oh, I have uh, Lords of Ragnarok, so there's the Viking one right there. I use for it. Yeah. Um, and they have they have done a, a survey, too, to see what backers' choices and suggested themes would right, be. Th and that's number, what, one, number one was Cthulhu. Which, that's why. There's a generic one. And, yeah. then, and then they have a whole list of other things, like D&D &D classes... Yeah, uh, Wild West, Roman Greco, that kind of stuff. So, and so who knows? They may have more uh, themes more to, come out in the future. More to come for sure. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I just think this is a really, 
it's a very like tiny part of the the gaming industry but you know with the existence of neoprene mats you know you do need to have a way to store them and i think this is a great way to be able to store them um and for the case of those who have a 3d printer do it yourself um or if you feel ambitious and want to try to make a buck or two you can buy the commercial license and crank them out Mm mm-hmm um, which that's going to do that for us. That's all our news. That is all of our news. So we're going to go. No to- ending to the indie. We just go hobby time. Yeah. Dream, blue, prime, paint. Socks. How much hobby have you gotten done? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sox has got some stuff going on, so he's probably got more uh, important things to worry about than uh, painting pieces of plastic. Yeah, unfortunately, I've got some issues uh, with my house that I'm having to deal with. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too, deta- too many details. I'll just say that. Uh, so I, I haven't been able to use my storage case or paint racks like I've wanted to these last couple of weeks. It does so, look really nice, though. You, you've got, it does. You've really built yourself a nice little a little setup pretty yeah, quickly. And that's what for. I- Go ahead. I was. Gonna, that's what I love about the hobby furniture is, you know, it's so quick to just get a couple pieces, put it together, and you have a space ready to go. Yeah, I mean, that's sitting on a, what, uh, two and a half by two and a half card, card table, folding card table. And so it's perfect for my little corner. Right now, eventually, when I retire and get to my own setup, I want to expand it out more, but that's probably what I'll like, like do that. for now. Yeah, like yours, George. Yep, exactly. So... It'll probably stay like that until I can get more space, and well, it's not going to happen for a few more years. Plus, I don't want to break stuff as I move around more. I'll... Well, and the fact that you know a two by a two and a half by two and a half card table and what one two three four five I've got six s- seven eight modules. One, two, yep. Uh, that'll that will pack up and move pretty easily. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, J- JP's actually been expo- experimenting with that uh, multi board that I did for a uh, desk organizer. He's uh, working on yep. that for uh, his hobby stuff, which that's a great option too, especially to use uh, unused wall space if, if that's what you've got to work with. Yep, um, absolutely. Well, speaking of uh, hobby and stuff, I um, I have uh, gotten a uh, different uh, cat tree. That mounts to the wall, and I've added. That's not stuff. hobby. <laughs> and I added it shelf. is. <laughs> stop, stop, because I, I th- this has a bad ending to it. I've added shelving for some of my board games, which has allowed me to put more stuff, including my 3D printer, onto the shelf that's to my right here, which has freed up my table that has the leaves that fold up so I can play games on it. And while I was doing all this, I didn't pay attention, and my uh, organizer cases that had all my custodies and Savannah in it fell. Oh, ouch! And so I would say a quarter of my custodies had pieces that came off of them, including the resin-printed uh, Emperor that I got as a Dreadnought stand-in. Oh! His sword broke, his head came off, a leg broke off, like... Uh, oh, man. Claws, like... So I spent some time gluing that together, Um, and I peeked at the Sylvaneth and there are loose pieces. I have not fully inspected it yet. So I am not looking at it. Good luck. Looking forward to putting that together. So. No, not at all. Well, the the bad part with the, uh, with the uh, custodies is they're all this like chrome paint. Chrome gold paint. So so yeah, you're going to have to make sure, making sure. Well, no, I was able to glue everything back together without damaging that paint thank god and when it did break it didn't damage the paint thank god and where it did it's it was gonna get covered up anyway so dodged a huge bullet there but yes uh, the case is fine the case is in one piece still so that's that's good (laughs) um i i looked into it um and an organizer he sells the uh the ferris uh sheets that you embed into the the tray the tray that way you have magnetic yeah yeah yeah. so i got to look at it and i'm trying to track down a source to see if i can just get sheet metal plates that are the same thickness because the thickness of the uh fair sheet coincides with uh some sheet metal gauges and so if i can just find a place to cut it to the the correct dimensions 
I can embed a sheet metal plate in instead, and I'd have better magnetic cohesion. Yeah. So um, that's my next step uh, as far as doing that um, and and trying to use sheet metal because sheet metal will, you know, hold the magnets in place better. So if something like this happens easier. again, it might be mitigated a little more because the magnet didn't give up the grip. Yep, absolutely. So I'm sorry, that's that stinks. We all we've we all come to those times where something falls and you're like, oh crap, do I even want to look in that? Yep. At this time. Nope. I'm gonna wait in, until my emotions can calm down and then I'll go back and look at it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that was just yesterday, so uh, uh, the fact that I got my custodies glued back together so quickly, I'm I'm proud of myself for. Um the the bonus with the Savannah, they were just primed. That's good. So yeah, we, I we weren't that far into it. Yeah. Uh and then Jason the Bruce is at PAX Australia on his B day. So someone just had to have a birthday and leave us, yeah, like we mentioned earlier. Yeah. So, so um We hate you, Bruce. Yep, yep, for sure. Uh, is that game talk? Did we talk about that last time or? No, we haven't done game talk and that was, that's a new topic for this week. That is. Okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move on to that since my hobby is sad and you didn't have any. And... Talk nerdy to me. Especially since I've done this three times. <laughs> I, I was going to say you do this every couple years actually. So I do. I do. So our topic is. Do you always keep everything or do you hobby purge stuff? And I've hobby purged three games. So I did my first one. And JP's a hoarder, by the way. He, he said that. He's a straight up hoarder. So good on you, JP. Uh, I hobby purge primarily because I move a lot. As you guys know, I'm in the military, so I move a lot. And so it's sometimes hard for me to find games that are playable in the areas that I moved to. Um, Flames of War was my first miniatures game that I got into. Uh, I played through the rest of my time in college before I moved away to England, and no one played there in England, even though it's an English company. It's that made by Battlefront. Makes no sense. I would think like Flames of War would be played on every corner store. Yeah, but I, where I lived, uh, I would have had a driven three hours to get to a store because I was out in the countryside Jeez. areas but where, where my base was it was it was pretty far away well, some okay, of the, that's some it, of the larger towns yeah that makes sense so um so I decided to purge that one um made some money off of it uh I I didn't sell it until I got to Illinois so yeah that's a mess JP <laughs> that's... as he shows a picture of his hobby area Nice walkway. I see one. That's about it. Um, yeah, I have to zoom so, this up to look at this. This is... Yeah. So I, I held on to Flames of War for two more moves, but then I decided to sell it in when I was stationed in Illinois. Um, made some good money off of it. Um, sold it all together as one set, and some guy wanted it. So, But then, as you guys know, I, picked, I was in uh, Star Wars Legion and Star Wars Armada, and I've sold both of those games as well. Um, Legion was primarily due to the rule changes and I didn't like how they were and I've heard that they're thinking about going back but I'll probably not, never go back to the game because I didn't like the transition that did AMG you, did didn't you keep one army or did you got rid of all of it I got rid of everything okay. and then when the announcement came out that uh, Armada was no longer being supported yeah that one went too even though I really enjoyed that game <sighs> That kind of makes because I mean, unless you're like, so let's fast forward you ten years, right? You're retired, you're not moving anymore, and you've got your group of five buddies that you always play games with. Keeping an obsolete game like Armada makes more sense with your essentially gypsy lifestyle. Yeah, where you know you kind of have to play what's playable in the area, and with you not liking 40k and not liking sigmar you know you have to be very flexible of what you're playing exactly because those are about the only two games that you're gonna find everywhere when you yeah when you relocate um 
like I, the joke about you getting stationed over in Effie Warren so we can play TMNT, right? The game store there, the two primary games are Sigmar and 40K. Um, I uh, don't see them advertising or talking about anything else. So, um, which is, I mean, and I realize that with being playing more of the niche games, I do realize that I'm going to have a harder time finding players yeah. that to play with. Uh, but I've built a dystopian wars community out in Florida. Uh, unfortunately, it's disbanded since I left. Granted, one of the war hosts that was down there with me kind of went away and played Necromunda and stole half the, uh, I wouldn't say still. He stopped coming to the store because it was a closer store. Yeah, he kind of converted to a different store and sure, and and took some of the other players with him. I mean, he wants to play Dystopian Wars again, um, but it's it's kind of hard when half the community goes away and yeah. uh, you're still better trying to support it. So, so and then when when I leave and I'm the the primary person that's playing it, it's unfortunately he's gonna. Do you, have, do you ever feel bad? Because, you know, you're the one who really got that group going. You you got people hooked on it. You got them buying the game, and then you left. And then I leave. Yep. Like, you're worse than a drug dealer. Like, drug dealers I at least stay there <laughs> and keep you addicted. You got them hooked, and then you left. And then I left. Yep, absolutely. But with me being a Warhol still, I still like the game. I'm excited for Armor Clash. I'm excited for Imperium and Sultanate to come out for Armor Clash. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what uh, version two of Drop of Drop Fleet is going to be like. So I have all my fleet stuff. I have all my zone stuff because I'm looking forward to Strike Team uh, Drop Squad Commander. I'm yep. about to say Strike Team, but Drop Squad Commander because I would love to do a, a full on campaign where you got the fleet, then you get the ground combat, and then you're able to do. The actual building combat in a kind of a campaign scenario setting. That would be the sexiest thing ever. <sighs> yeah. Especially, so I, yeah. Um, so, so for me, like, I do hobby purging, but it's more of like, you know, is this worth occupying the space? You know, I do have more space and I have the, the space to keep stuff around more because, well, I haven't moved in 15 years. So, yeah. um, but there's the whole constant of like, do I want this to stay around? Do I want to keep this on the shelf? Um, the, the stuff back there behind me, uh, I'm definitely going to keep it for sure. Uh, Masters of the Universe, um, all my Cthulhu stuff, like I'm definitely keeping that. Um, I am toying with uh, selling my Nemesis. Uh, I canceled my Nemesis pledge that I had pending because I was just like, I'm really not, I'm not as excited as, uh, as I want to be. Um, my yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, ISS Vanguard. I was pretty excited for it, and then I got it and really started looking to it, and just like. I'm still going to try to play it because it, it is a very like solo oriented game, which is part of the reason why I was trying to get my table cleared off is so I could have the, the real estate for it. And I, I am going to try to give it an honest go, but most likely I am probably going to offload that because again, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's, I'm not feeling it. Um, yeah. In the case of like my Warhammer stuff, um, I haven't played the game for quite a while. Um, JP played a game last week and he said he actually enjoyed it. Um, I probably will always hang on to those and keep them regardless how competitive they are because uh, I have a Stormcast Eternal Army. It's completely painted and it looks great. Um, I got uh, second place in a painting competition with it. Uh, Co-second place because I displayed it with... Uh, my buddy stuff who we had the we had Starcast just different colors so it's like we mashed all together like everything was similar enough kind of thing that it worked and they're yeah. like well you did this and you won so we can't give either one of you best painted so you get second like <laughs> yeah fair so, enough so that yeah <laughs> uh, the, the, there was like you know you probably guys probably would have tied for first on painting but we couldn't give that to you because you guys already won other stuff in the tournament so we couldn't do that for painting. Um, I will hang yeah. on to that stuff because at some point I will be able to play it again. Um, yeah. Someone, I, I guess the Stormcast apparently eventually 
there's going to be no more rules for some of those, so whatever there. Uh, but my Space Wolves, I don't foresee anything going away with those any ever time, anytime soon. Uh, I've got my Fire Slayers. They're a very prominent faction. They're not going to go away. So I'm going to hang on to those. Um, my uh, 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 War Machine, uh, Protector to Menloth. If, if someone wants it for 20 bucks, I'll freaking... I'd probably sell it for twenty. Upload them. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not doing anything for me. It's just taking up space up there. Yeah, I can see it. It's it's up there. Um, you know, I, I'm feeling the same way about my my drop stuff. Like I have drop zone and I have drop fleet. I have no one to play with. I, I, yeah. I, well, I have Sam, but he's got like you know a starter box and like two additional ships. I think you know. Wait till I get to FE Warren, then we'll play. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I will show you how I play Shaltari. I know uh, you will, and, and and you will cry because Levi well, went for me. And, I know, and, and shame on you. Still, and, well, and he only learned from what I described. He didn't learn from me actually doing it. So I know that <laughs> it, it might anyways. be a little worse for you, socks. <laughs> it might, it might. But another another reason why I purge too is with me moving every two three years. I actually have a weight limit that I have to abide by or else I'm going to get charged for my move. That's Since true. the military pays for my, my move, I get a uh, weight allowance based on my rank. And so if I go over that, which I haven't yet, but that, that so when I buy new games, that's kind of one of the reasons why my wife says, okay, if you want a new game, you got to sell a new game or a, an old game. That way, one, I have space for it. Two, I'm not going over my weight allowance. That I, so, uh, while I was over in Okinawa, Wait, wait allowances, right? Uh, yep. He was uh, leaving. Uh, he got there as an E4. He was leaving as an E5, which is shocking because usually it's the other way around, right? Um, yeah, he especially spent, in Korea. Well, Okinawa, it's not Korea. It's well, Japan. Oh, yeah, Korea, Japan, still. Yeah, yeah that's close the, enough. The army, the army gets to go to Korea. Um, but he spent like all of his money and he got to himself something like a 48 inch or something like that CRT TV. Flat panels weren't available yet. Like nope. I, I had two 15 inch flat screen monitors for my computer, and I paid about two fifty each for those. Yeah, for 15 inch ones, he had like a 47 inch CRT. Which, for for those youngins, CRTs are like the old TVs that your grandparents have. Yes. He couldn't take it with him because it went over his weight limits. <laughs> So, uh, that's a thing. Like, so yeah, I definitely got to purge and, and, and whatnot. Uh, the other thing I always find myself purging, right? So socks, wh what's the most recent game you, uh, you put together? Hail Caesar. Okay. My Romans. Where, and are Carthaginians. Your, where, where are your sprues at? Right there in that box still. Right. Or at least the ones that I have. How put long together. are you holding on to those sprues? Uh, oh, you're talking about the empty sprues? Yes. Uh, I have no the, the empty ones that I've done. I've thrown away. Oh, you already have. So I, I'm guilty of this, and I have to do this every couple months. Uh, I'm sure. You know, this is probably ninety percent of the community, right? You empty the sprue, you put it back in the box, you hang on to the box for about... six months or longer. Because you know you've built all you can off it, but there's still you know bits on it. You know, you can bits still, of you... pieces of it you may or go back to. Yeah, yeah. So what I've done actually. Is hang on, I'll be right back. And, and yes, tr trimming all, yeah. See, oh, that's I, what this is. I tried doing that with my drop fleet, and I got halfway through my sprues, and I said, No, I can't do this. And I literally just tossed the rest of them. Like, I just, yeah, I, I'm so it's not, a tackle, tackle box with all of my, with little labels from the label maker. I'm not that ambitious or anal retentive. I, I tried doing that and I just, I can't. That's all my dystopian war stuff. And I, I did it primarily because you could, sw you can swap weapons pretty easily in that game. Don't, and so if don't I do want that to, hand us your socks. That's true. <laughs> So, um, I did it primarily, primarily for the weapons because you can, ma I'm going to try and magnetize my weapons so I can swap them out. 
or uh, that's fair but i have to do that while i'm building the kit i can't go back to it two months yeah. later six months later you know i have to do it then and there i can't and and like i said i i can't sit there and trim sprues and put them in a bin and label it and, and like i i can't do that um i did that right before i moved up here because i didn't want to have to move up with all those empty sprues with all my dystopian war stuff yeah. so i i did it right before i moved up here yeah i want to say eight months ago i did a purge and i dumped all my sprues into like you know a contractor trash bag i filled the trash bag nice with just empty sprues like which oh oh so th- th- this is kind of a side note thing um 3d printing plastic lots of plastic right um casey found something she sent me the link to it it was just the first one she found but it and i'm sure if you look it it'll, won't be just for like pla and like that type of plastic but i'm sure like you know hard game screw plastic model plastic but it was an actual recycling company so you could send off your supports and whatever to have it reused recycled and not go into a landfill as trash so yeah and, and, and that's another thing too and i uh did you make any sprue goo that's what jp was asking no i did not make any sprue goo i again i don't have that patience um i i i i know i try to exude it and like try to be all zen but i have almost zero tolerance you want to see me get irritated watch me while i'm working with software i just i i lose it i (laughs) that's I could sit down for two hours and paint a cape and be happy, but I can't do other things and have patience. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but I think that's something to, to pay attention to uh, with purges is, yeah, see, there you go. You bought stuff six months ago and you still have it many. What's going on, JP? Come on. You know? <laughs> yeah. Shame on you. So JP, it's one of those things. Game on you. It's you know, there's all these great ideas, time and execution. Um, but I, I thought I would mention that because I know a few months ago, I uh, I talked about too much plastic in kits and you know the waste and stuff, and I've just tossed all those. When it's like now, there's companies where they're actually starting to focus and do some form of recycling now, which I think is great. So yeah, um, and. With the exception of some people like JP, because we're picking on you because you showed us the picture and you you said you're a hoarder. I think it's absolutely. I think it's healthy to do a hobby purge because if you go through and do a hobby purge, that frees up space. It gets rid of stuff, collecting dust, taking up space. You know, and it's not bringing you joy anymore. I'm not. I'm not subscribing to what's her face's uh, mentality though. Because once you've sold that or gotten rid of it and free of that space, you can go buy more stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah, JP, that shelf is a mess. You can't work on that shelf. I know it's all, a bunch of it's your wall stuff, your wall organizer and stuff like that, but still, you can't work on it. <laughs> yeah, that's... I can't... like. I'd flip it around, but the cord's not long enough. But like, I have, I have no clutter on my work desk because it's where I live for nine hours a day. I I can't have clutter on it. It will just, mm. yeah, yeah. Ninety percent is the new wall unit. But yeah, no. Um, it to to one extent, you are the, the probably the most extreme end of the hobby because, as you said, you know, every couple of years. You do have to move. You do have to relocate. You know, you've got to purge some of that stuff out. Um, that you also have a um, concerned spouse who asks you questions just, just of, a you know, what's this? Why do you have this? What What is this still doing here? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, what's, this, what's this $100 out of the chicken game? Oh, don't worry, babe. That's a new board game. Or that's just more bits for my army that I want. Or uh, another Kickstarter that I backed. Like, Drop Squad. Soon. Hopefully soon, we'll get Drop Squad. I know they're waiting on uh, 2.0 to come out. But uh, 
for the drop squads Kickstarter to start. Yeah, but, is, it, is that supposed to be November? Uh, is November, it, December time frame. Yeah, I, I know release for the game is later this month, so yeah. I would assume the Kickstarter is gonna yeah. be here in the next couple months. Um, so and then in my case, you know, it's just like you know, yes, I'm purging because I'm trying to, I'm trying to maintain and not accumulate. You know, like part of my rearranging is so I can store my stuff better so that it's more accessible. Um, I've got a shelf of board games I can't get to because the table's in the way. And because I had the 3D printer yeah. on the table, I couldn't move the table. And so I just couldn't get to that stuff. You know, it's yeah. Um, but then I, I knew one guy, uh, he was rogue trader era, like 40 K. Oh, wow. Era. And, and when, when I still knew him, like, you know, he built a lot of his own stuff cause he couldn't afford, you know, games workshop prices, which I get, but the yeah. stuff he did buy, he still had because it was such an investment for him and it was such a, yeah. uh, a financial burden for lack of better words for him to buy that which you know it, it did affect uh some of his basic you know necessities for for getting by on you know he refused to get rid of anything because it was such a investment emotional point. investment yeah yeah so you know and and i can understand that too which you know that's why you know you do ha have some people who are actual legitimate hoarders because it's such an investment and important part and piece to them and i get yeah. that and you know you know, I, I can't I can't blame people for being like that no. because that's that's just how things are. You know, you know, not everyone's like me where it's just like, well, I don't need this anymore. It's it's gonna go to the bin or whoever gives me twenty bucks first. I don't care which. Yeah. You know, um, I'd rather not go to the bin because it is worth something to someone. But I also don't want to take the time, effort, and energy because I'm impatient and I'm not gonna spend that time to to do that. Yeah, and and if you are considering this, um, my game store uh, down in Florida, if there was a fifth Saturday of the month, they would set up a trade day where you could take old board games or whatever you wanted to, and you could put them on the tables, and you could put down a price, and if you sold it there at the store, you would get, unfortunately, store credit, so you'd have to spend money that you earned back to the store, but it's a way for most some you check your stores they may do something like this or that way you can sell it to someone inside your community that may want it if you have a store i, I apparently if you, that is true if you have a store the, the rumor i heard was the, the the one that was here shut down and within like two months another one's gonna be opening up in the same location different ownership um yeah the 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 two guys running it like they came to a large disagreement and they decided to stop Part ways instead of you know so i haven't been there yet um i i should probably go check it out um if it's there i i haven't heard or anything about it the some people i know that i'm still friends with that you know did go and spend time at the store you know they haven't yeah posted or said anything about it so i don't know um but yeah uh purging is good purging is healthy purging allows you to buy new shiny things which yes. that's thanks the, JP. That's the big part of the problem with the hobby is new shiny. Yeah. Good job trying to work on it. <laughs> At least your organization. Right. Organization. <laughs> organization is so huge. Just look at your paint storage now, socks. Yes. So it's not. It's it's no longer in my Tupperware. Right? It's now in nice shelves. It's easier to access. Absolutely. <laughs> Demos, conventions, you know, that kind of stuff. Alrighty, upcoming events. We have the Melbourne figure painting collection. Is it supposed to, I thought it was supposed to be collective. Um, anyways, uh, oh, that is the 27th of October from 12 to 5 p.m. at the Gaming Arena. Uh, Firestorm, Con Firestorm Games, Drop Fleet Commander version 2 tournament. That is still delayed. Uh, that will be taking place at 66 uh, Sloper Road in Cardiff. It is a thousand point narrative event. Tickets are 25 pounds online, 26 pounds in store. Um, that's a lot of organizers, JP. Uh, yeah. Then we have uh, the Spellin' Spectacle. That is the 
That is this weekend, right? No, that's no, that's November. 9th. No, that's November. 9th and 10th. 10th November. November 9th and 10th um, in the Netherlands. I will po- will post the notes. Uh, I can't pronounce that. Uh, it's 19.95 euro for a day ticket uh, on pre presale. Then we have the Conquest Dutch World Tour. That is the same weekend at 2,000 point tournament. $35 entry. Uh, Acrimandas Syndicate Wars 4, the 16th through 17th of November, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Narrative Necromanda Campaign Tournament, $60 ticket, two day event. Uh, Bruce didn't put down where that is. CanCon, the 25th to the 27th of January, Epic Exhibition Park in Canberra. Another drop fleet, drop fleet commander version two tournament at CanCon. Details still to be confirmed, and then drop squad commander painting competition still coming. No date set yet. So, yep. Uh, lots of things going on. Um, yeah, that's about gonna do it. Uh, we'd like to thank Valhalla Hobby and our Patreons for for supporting us. The Hall Hobby is great store, great prices, great shipping. If you are in the continental United States, probably into Canada too, uh, with that good old NAFTA stuff. Um, if you're outside the continental United States, um, shipping is going to be more expensive, but they still have great prices on everything in the yeah. store. Uh, I want to say your two two player starter set was uh, substantially cheaper through them than virtually anywhere else, uh, and the shipping was super cheap. Um, then, uh, like I said, I got my, uh, complete, uh, army painter contrast set. Uh, I want to say that was 40 or 50 cheaper than virtually anywhere else. And I think it was like $12 shipping. So, uh, yeah, definitely not, check out Valhalla bad. hobby. They've got all the normal stuff. They've got Bushido, um, dystopian wars, armor clash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, conquest, right. That was on the list yep, too. Conquest. Yeah. So, I mean, they got, they got lots of stuff. Um, uh, again, if you uh, use the code TABLE to check out, uh, you get 5% off uh, your first order over $100. And again, if you uh, do support us on Patreon, that is $2 a month. Uh, that goes to our SoundCloud. That goes to our website. It, it goes. To, it does go to our pockets. It keeps the lights on, keeps uh, everything that we're using to uh, produce this podcast, keeping that going. Uh, it It's $2 a month. It does help us out a lot. So, uh, anyone who does support us, we do really appreciate it. Yes. Um, again, if you do become a supporter, you can be like JP and listen to us, uh, make fun of you on the podcast. If you're the only one that shows up, JP, I love you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So th- th- thanks again to, uh, all those, uh, who do support us in this, uh, endeavor that we are doing. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, if you do want to become a patron, that is patreon.com slash getting tabled. Uh, we have a website getting tabled.com. The changes on that were getting delayed. I do need to talk to my, my buddy slash associate about a different hosting solution that would be better with what he can do to do what we want to do with the website. Uh, majority of the posts, it's going to be, uh, facebook.com slash getting tabled. Um, do, do, do. let's see youtube.com slash game table that's where the video version and our unboxing reviews um you know that's where a lot of our content goes uh please give us a like and subscribe it does help out the channel uh i want to yep. say we are at 800 and something subscribers so i would love to I'd love to get to the thousand mark because then the next goal after that is to get a play button and i would love to have a play button Yes, that would be awesome. Which, uh, uh, where are we at? We are at 812 subscribers, so uh, we're getting there. Uh, if you got anything for us, questions, comments, uh, things you want us to talk about, things you want us to let us know about, uh, you can send it to us at uh, gettingtable at gmail.com. Uh, X, Instagram, threads, at getting tabled. Jason the Bruce, he does have a Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Jason the Bruce. Give him a subscribe there. Uh, you get notified when he does uh, do some streaming. Uh, I think he's trying to get into that a little more. Uh, nothing too yeah. definitive. Uh, he's got a lot going on right now, and he's got a new bike, and he's having fun with that. That's why he's not going to be here in November either, because he's going on a ride. The jerk. 
Um, yes. And then his other uh, project he has, uh, youtube.com slash toy reel, where they talk about toys. So uh, you should go check that out. Give them a, a, a follow as well. Socks. Anything else for the people? Uh, also, we have our Discord. I don't know if you mentioned that. Oh, I, do not, ask. I did not mention the Discord. We do have a Discord. Um, yep. Where we have lots of different channels. You can post questions in there as well if you don't want to email us. Because um, we are kind of active on Discord as well. So, uh, Yeah, we chat there. We, we talk about things. We do. We, we, we share our projects and, and our uh, trials and tribulations and the neat And stuff memes and... Yes. And memes, so. yes. Yes, always always memes. So, but otherwise, no, I think we've covered it all for, the, for this week. Alrighty. Socks, thanks for showing up. You as well. I'm uh, I'm glad you're living somewhere where you won't, uh, you know, where the wind literally isn't hurting your face. Me too. I, I know I joke about that's why I live where I live because, you know, you know, the wind hurts my face, but I don't have to deal with all other stuff. But uh, I'm glad you're not dealing with it right now, so... Um, oh, uh, that was something else I was going to mention. Uh, this is this is quite important. Uh, Warsenal, uh, they make Infinity Terrain. They were in the path of Milton, and they've come out pretty unscathed, and they had a little logo that they made to show that they were safe. They are yes. going to do that logo on tokens. The proceeds of those tokens will go to Relief for Milton. So... If you play Infinity or you just need some tokens, you should go check out Warsenal because they will have some tokens that will be benefiting people, those uh, affected by that disaster. Yeah. So, yes, I think it's time to play this. Push. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For listening to Getting Table. Music used in this podcast was created by Eric Mataris at soundimage.org. Bruce is king of the unwashed masses. <laughs>